Hi everyone! For today's video, I wanted to talk about my favorite Lolita releases for 2022. There were a lot of releases this year, and I just wanted to talk about the things that I really loved and have added to my own wish list. So let's start off with the biggest brand that everybody knows and loves, and that is Angelic Pretty. There was a lot of hits and a lot of made-to-orders. However, the one that struck my fancy and the one that I tried to win the bloodbath for but failed was Sunny Smile Laundry. This series is so cute. The cuts and styling of it is really reminiscent of Neon Star Diner, and I really love a laundry theme. Everything on this print was so adorable, and since I wasn't able to purchase it, it has been added to my wish list. But this series had a JSK and an OP, as well as several accessories and hair clips that were released. I just really think the color palette and overall motifs and themes in the series really work well together. Moving on to my favorite brand, Baby the Starshine Bright. As I mentioned in my previous Lita in Review vlog, I was interested in the Floating Tea Party series and getting the Usukumi clothes really solidified my love for that series. However, one that really blew me out of the park was the Harvest Festival series. For one, I was able to purchase the whole series, and two, the details on this dress are absolutely amazing. I really love the food motifs and the storytelling of each little panel on this dress is wonderful. From Usakumia and Kumakumia baking a little pie, to them gathering up pumpkins, and then all their friends surrounding the print, such as like a little squirrel and rabbits. It is absolutely adorable, and I'm very happy to have it in my wardrobe. The other print that I loved from Baby the Starshine Bright is the Meiji Chocolate Collab. If you love Usakumias, Kumakumias, and chocolate, this collab is for you. Unfortunately, the series was store limited, so unless you lived in Japan, you weren't able to purchase this series, and oh my gosh, this collab was one that I never knew that I needed and has really solidified my love for both Usukumia, Kumakumia, and chocolate prints now. Never thought that happened, but it has, and I I love this print series for it. There is two JSKs from the series and both are absolutely wonderful. All the colorways that they have for the series look great, though I have to say the ivory really stands out. The browns and the chocolate motifs really stand out. A surprise hit for me this year was Alice and the Pirates. There are three releases that I want to talk about, which kind of surprises me. I never thought that I was an Alice and the Pirates girl, but I guess I am now. So I want to talk about the one that was really, really well done, and that is the Chris Hyakiyako Phantom Flower in the Dusk series. If you know anything about Japanese folklore, there is a Parade of Thousand Demons painting that is quite popular, and this print really captured all of the demon spirits and the essence of Japanese folklore with not just the cuts but also the colorways as well. I really enjoyed the Chris interpretation in this print. So the series came with two JSKs and a skirt, and these cuts are definitely something that you do not see regularly in Lolita, and one day I really wish to add the series into my Wardrobe. The little Chris as a little ghost with his little tongue sticking out is just so adorable and I really need it in my life, you know? Alice and the Pirates really kicked it off with the Chris series this year. Another series I got really excited was the Fluffy Chris Patch series. This was a relatively small series, but it features Chris in a patch format. Let's talk about this JSK. I have pre-ordered this JSK, but it won't be coming until next year, so I'm a little excited to show you the series. This series has a embroidered patch of Chris on the JSK and I feel like patchwork is a little rare to see in the Lita stuff nowadays. The only other patchwork item that I have in my wardrobe is Take a Walk with Usakumia. So I really love the modern interpretation of having Chris on the patch. This JSK looks like it's got so many good functioning pockets which feels very rare for Baby the Starshine Bright and Alice and the Pirates. I can't wait to show you guys that series when it comes. And then the last series from Alice and the Pirates that I was really really excited excited about was the Spider Lace series, specifically Rider JSK from the August 2022 release. This JSK is based off of a Rider vest and while spider lace isn't anything new, the cut and the bodice lacing is very unique. The bodice lace features Alice and the Pirates printed lace. Let that sink in. Alice and the Pirates specific 
lace. I do not recall a time where Baby the Starship Bright has had specific lace that spelled out their brand name. So this is a little bit revolutionary to me. Since seeing that little detail, I have added this JSK into my wish list. Seriously, Alice and the Pirates knocked it out of the park with this JSK. The next brand I want to talk about is Metamorphose Tom's Defeat, and the series I want to talk about is Wonder Card. This series isn't being released in 2022, but it is on pre-order. The series is not going to be released until 2023, around May or June. So the Wonder Card print itself has been released from Metamorphose before, but I really enjoy the reimaginings of the cuts to make it a little bit more modern. So there is an OP and a JSK in this series, and these cuts are are very fun and I really enjoy all of the color series that they have done. The JSK has such a fun asymmetrical design that I think would be really fun to pull colors from in order to coordinate it. So I can't wait to see whoever purchased the series coordinate it because it's such a great Alice in Wonderland inspired series. And then the last Lolita specific brand that I want to talk about is Valley Lees, which is Atelier Piro's sub sister brand, I believe. What really drew me to the brand was how classic and timeless the designs feel and I wanted to talk about the irregular skirt. They have it in both long and shorter version and this sort of skirt I think would look really wonderful under dresses but also on its own. There's so many ruffles in it and I think the construction is very very solid. So if you're into more classic styles this brand might be for you. I love that there is a focus on the cuts and the construction of the garment instead of just strictly prints. I definitely love to add this skirt into my collection in the future and I really can't wait to see what Valley Lees releases in the future. And and then as a special mention, I'm going to talk about Emily Temple Cute, which isn't necessarily a Lolita brand, but they do release a few pieces that can be used for Lolita fashion, as well as Otome fashion, which I'm also interested in. Emily Cute really knocked it out of the park for me this year, and I want to talk about three different series that they have released that I wish to add to my wardrobe ASAP. The first up is the Serial series. I wasn't able to find a lot of information about this series itself, but it does come in an OP and a J. JSK cut and it features, as you can guess from the name, cereal. I really love the patterning of it. It looks very much like a retro 50s, the beginnings of Frosted Flakes cereal branding and I am living for it. I love how bright and fun breakfast cereal packaging is and this print series really knocked it out of the park with the themes and the colors. I haven't seen it worn a lot, but there are a few snapshots from Emily Semplecute's Instagram that I'm going to showcase here. But this is a series that I definitely love to add to my wardrobe just because of how poppy and fun that it is. The next series is So Up My Alley and it is Kitten Library. This series only came in a JSK, but it has four different colorways and the bodice looks like it's velveteen. Plus the prints got kittens and books like how can you go wrong with that? I think it's a great series to wear in the fall and winter months just to peruse a bookstore. It is so adorable and those kittens have really won my heart. And the last series I'm going to talk about from Emily Temple Cute is Pasta! Literally this series is just called Pasta and it is carbs on a dress. Just pasta's pieces on a dress. It comes in three different colorways that really pop against the print and I really really adore this series. I don't need a lot of pasta anymore but having pasta pieces on this dress looks so adorable. I really enjoy the spacing of the pasta pieces on this dress and I think the three colorways that they chose really unified the whole pasta theme. I think it'd be really cute in my wardrobe. And with that, that is the video for today. Let me know what your favorite Lolita releases are from 2022. I'd love to hear all about it in the comment section down below. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!